Today we're going to look at a pretty cool recursively defined sequence problem. So let's jump right into it. So our goal is to find all sequences of positive real numbers so that for all n bigger than or equal to 2, we have the following recursion. So we've got an is equal to n times an minus 1 minus 1 over n minus an minus 1. So here, a1 could be thought of as free or potentially the seed for the sequence. And then a2 is defined in terms of a1 right here, a3 in terms of a2, so on and so forth. Now, we're going to break this into a couple of cases because, look, we want to find all sequences satisfying this. And notice that any sequence satisfying this will be built off of its seed. So we need to find out the possible values of a sub 1. So we're going to start with the possibility that a1 is less than 1. And notice that it being less than 1 and this rule up here being bigger than 0, that means it's between 0 and 1. So let's start off by looking at this difference operator applied to the sequence. In other words, the difference of a n and a n minus 1. So this is simply equal to what? Well, I'm going to apply my recursion for a n. That'll give me n a n minus 1 minus 1 over n minus a n minus 1. And from that, I will subtract a n minus 1. Now, of course, what we need to do is put these two things together by multiplying by um, something to build a common denominator. So the common denominator will simply be n minus a n minus 1. So we're going to multiply the second term by n minus a n minus 1 over itself. Okay, so let's see what that leaves us with. So here, I'll put some parentheses right here. And well, I'm going to put this all as a fraction over n minus a n minus 1. And so notice the first term will be n times a n minus 1 minus 1. I'll put those in parentheses. And then we'll have minus n times a n minus 1 minus a n minus 1 squared. That's from distributing that a n minus 1 to both terms in the numerator. Okay, so that's what we're left with now. Now, it's pretty easy to see that this term here and this term here will cancel. And we'll be left with the following expression. a n minus 1 squared minus 1 over, let's see, n minus a n minus 1. And then since a n minus 1 is positive, we know this denominator is smaller than n. So if we replace this denominator with n, we end up with something bigger. So that means this whole thing is less than a n minus 1 squared minus 1 all over n. So we have that kind of inequality. And in fact, we'll use this inequality for all of our cases over here. So we might want to hang on to that, but I'll rewrite it when we need it. Okay, so now let's apply this a couple of times to see if we can see a pattern occurring. And then we have 0 is less than a2, but then here I'll plug 2 into this inequality and move the a1 part over, so that's going to be less than a1, and then plus a1 squared minus 1 over 1. So again, that's just from moving things around in the inequality which we just built. Now, let's observe that a1 is less than 1. We assumed that. That's in our case over here. So we know that this is a negative number. So since that's a negative number, we're adding it to a1. That means a2 is less than a1, and a1 is, well, less than 1. And now, let's observe that we can keep going with this. So 0 is less than a3, which is less than a2 plus a2 squared squared minus 1 over 2. But then again, that a2 squared minus 1 over 2 is less than uh, 0. So we add that to a2 and we get something less than a2, which is less than a1, which is less than 1. So let's observe that this string we're building is has the following structure. And I guess you could carefully prove this with induction, but I'm not going to worry about doing that. We have 0 is less than a n, which is less than a n minus 1, so on and so forth, a 3, a 2, a 1, and finally all of that is less than 1. So we've got this monotonic de decreasing sequence of numbers. 
So that means it converges. That being said, we're not gonna worry about the convergence so much just yet. We're gonna play around with what this type of inequality will give us. So let's recall that we just showed that our sequence satisfies this nice, maybe infinite string inequality. We also had this a n minus a n minus one could be written as that expression over there on the right. Well, as an inequality. Now we're gonna take this inequality and rewrite it by replacing n with n minus one or n minus two, so on and so forth. So let's see, if we replace n with n minus one, we get a n minus one minus a n minus two is less than a n minus two squared minus one over n minus one. Then if we replace n with n minus two, we get a n minus two minus a n minus three is less than, let's see, a n minus three squared minus one over n minus two, and so on and so forth. So let's see, down here we'll have a three minus a two is less than a two squared minus one all over two. And then finally, a, let's see, two minus a one, we already worked with this one, that was a one squared minus one over one. But now I'd like to observe I can use my string inequality here to replace all of these a sub whatever with a sub one, and that will push all of this larger because a1 is bigger than all of those. So this is in fact less than a1 squared minus one over n. This is less than a1 squared minus one over n minus one. This is less than a1 uh, squared minus one over n minus two. This down here is less than a1 squared minus one over two. And then this is, well, equal to a1 squared minus one over one. But now what we'll do is sum up this inequality. So we're gonna add down this left column. Notice in the end, we get a n minus a one, and then we're gonna sum down that right column, and notice that there was a common factor that we can factor out of all of this, namely a one squared minus one. And we're left with something called the nth harmonic number, so a half plus a third plus one plus all the way up to one over n. Okay, so we're actually almost done with this case, but I need a little bit more room, so let's bring that up and finish it off. So everything we've done so far is built up to the following inequality. We have a n is less than a one plus a one squared minus one times this nth harmonic number. Okay, so now I'm gonna use this following fact, and that is we know the limit as n goes to infinity of one plus half plus third, all the way up to one over n is infinity. This is a well-known divergent sequence, or yeah, sequence of partial sums of the harmonic series, I guess I should say. But what does that mean? Well, and that means that there exists a natural number, which I'll call capital N, where we can make this thing as big as we want. So how big do we want to make it? Well, let's pick this capital N so that for all a uh, little n bigger than or equal to this capital N, we have, let's see, one plus a half all the way up to one over little n is bigger than a one over one minus a one squared. So that's how big we wanna make this. So in particular, this inequality holds if we uh, write one over capital N for the one over N there. Okay, so now we're ready to finish this thing off and I'll finish it off just with an observation. And that is that A sub N, and this is for all N bigger than or equal to capital N, is less than A1 plus A1 squared minus one times a1 over one minus a1 squared. So we just replace our harmonic number with this a1 over one minus a1 squared. And you might say, well, the inequality looks like it's going in the wrong direction, but in fact, it's being multiplied by a negative number right here, so it is actually going in the correct direction. Okay, but notice that when these two things cancel, we pick up a minus sign, and a1 minus a1 is zero. So let's observe that we have a n is less than zero for all n bigger than or equal to this capital N that we chose up here. But of course, that contradicts our rule up here that this has to be a positive sequence. 
So that means, in fact, it is impossible for a1 to be less than 1. Okay, now let's move on to the next case. So we just showed it was impossible for the first term of our sequence to be less than 1. Now let's see what happens if it equals 1. And here we're just going to explore a little bit. So notice we know that a2 will be equal to 2 times a1 minus 1 over 2 minus a1. But of course we're assuming that a1 is 1, so we can just make these replacements here with these numbers being equal to 1, and you see we've got 2 minus 1 over 2 minus 1, which is of course equal to 1. So we have a2 is equal to 1. Now let's look at a3. So a3 will be 3 times a2 minus 1 over 3 minus a2. But of course, again, a2 is equal to 1, so we're left with 3 minus 1 over 3 minus 1. So a3 is also 1. But that sets up a pretty clear induction. So inductively, let's observe that if a sub k is equal to 1, then we see that a sub k plus 1, or I guess I should say if a k minus 1 equals 1, just to keep our indices similar to what we have over here. So if a k minus 1 is equal to 1, then a k is equal to k times a k minus 1 minus 1 over k minus a k minus 1. But of course, again, that's just k minus 1 over k minus 1, which is equal to 1. So that's our inductive argument that if a1 is equal to 1, then they're all equal to 1. So here we can say this means that a n equals 1 for all n bigger than or equal to 1. Now we've got one more case left, so let's do that. Okay, so for our last case, that's the case when a1 is equal to 1. Now I'd like to observe that if we set b n equal to 1 over a n, for all n bigger than or equal to 1, we've got a new sequence. It's a, kind of the reciprocal sequence of our original sequence. And notice if a1 is bigger than 1, that tells us that b1 is on the interval between 0 and 1. So it satisfies this rule up here, this bn is bigger than 0, and it satisfies our case 1, b1 is less than 1. Now let's also observe this. Let's look at bn, which is 1 over an, and that can be written in terms of this stuff over here. So let's see, that's just the reciprocal of this. So it's going to be n minus an minus 1 over n an minus 1 minus 1. Of course, if bn is 1 over an, then an is 1 over bn. So that means that we can take these and replace them with 1 over bn minus 1. So 1 over bn minus 1. But that sets up a nice calculation. Let's just multiply both sides or both parts of this fraction by bn minus 1. That's going to leave us with n bn minus 1 minus 1 all over n minus bn minus 1. But that's the same recursion that a n satisfies. So let's observe that bn satisfies our setup right here and b1 is less than 1. But we just showed that there is no sequence that satisfies that in our case 1. So that leads us to a contradiction as well. Meaning the only sequence that satisfies the setup that we have is the constant sequence an equals 1. And that's a good place to stop.